There was no rainbows in the sky. But after Noah, after the flood, God put a beautiful rainbow. And since you answered the question correctly the first time, I know you're going to know the second answer. The, the sign of the covenant was the rainbow. And what did that rainbow mean? Anybody else? No more flood. <laughs> I'm sorry. Me too. No more floods. And God would never destroy the earth again with a flood. But is the world going to be destroyed? Oh, yes. God said clearly the world, the world is going to be destroyed. It's going to be taken apart by its seeds. Everything has got to go. And this time it's not going to be by water, but by what? Fire. By fire. Okay? So you got to know your Bible and know your history. That's why I love the church. It knows their Bible. Yes, the world is going to be destroyed. But there's good news. Those of you who want to hold fast, if the world's going to be destroyed, does that mean I'm going to be destroyed too? No. You're going to be spared if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. That's why the gospel is good news. That's why I get excited about preaching every Sunday and getting an opportunity. And now, thanks to Brother Russ, this message is going to be going out. sermon is getting out there, and I'm even having people calling them, I saw you on YouTube, Pastor. And so the word is getting out there. And the good news is that gospel message of Jesus is that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not what? Perish. But have what? Everlasting, everlasting life. And everlasting life starts now. Can you, Cassie? And Brother Dennis? It starts now. I'm looking for people in the back row. Sister Leslie? You have eternal life, and it starts now. So that was the covenant with Noah. And then there was another covenant, uh, the Abrahamic covenant, and that was in Genesis 15, 9. And that was an unconditional promise to fulfill the grant of land. God promised Israel that they would have the area called Canaan. And then there was another Abrahamic promise, which is what we're preaching on today, Genesis 17, and I'll go into that. That was a, a, that was a conditional divine pledge to be Abraham's God and the God of his descendants. And we're going to be talking about that in detail. There was a Sinai covenant. That was a covenant that was given with the children of Israel when God made with Israel the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and as the people of the Lord that he had redeemed from bondage to make them an earthly power. And then there was the Davidic covenant. That was the covenant with David. Why do you give the passage from the Sinai covenant? passage for the Sinai covenant was Exodus 19. Exodus 19. And then there was the Davidic covenant, and that was the covenant that God made with David in 2 Samuel 7, 5. And then there is the new covenant, and that was in Jeremiah 31, 31. So we're going to be talking about all these different covenants over the next four weeks, and we're going to end up with the new covenant. There's a new deal, a new arrangement, a new agreement that God has made with you and I and you and I are connected to this Abrahamic covenant, and it's an exciting covenant. And that's why I'm focusing on that one today and starting with that. So if you have your outline, if you have your outline, the report number one is this God establishes his covenant with Abraham. God has made a covenant with his, and write in the word people. God has made a covenant with his people. God has made a covenant with you and I, and it started with Abraham. Now, Abraham was a man of faith. If you look at the story of Abraham, it picks up and it starts out in Abraham chapter 12. And here it is, the call of Abraham. Abraham was living in a certain country at a certain time. He was the son of, uh, he had his father's name was listed in there, and his father's uncle's names were listed in there. And Abraham came from this great family, and God told Abraham to leave his country and go to another country. Why did God want him to leave? Because God wanted to start an arrangement, a covenant with Abraham to bless him. And a part of the covenant that he made Abraham, that he made with Abraham, and let's, let's look at it briefly. Uh, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. The Lord said to Abram, his name was Abram at that time, leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And here it is. And all 
the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. See, some people think this covenant that God made with Abraham was exclusive in what sense it was. Some people think that this covenant that God made with Abraham only was a blessing on the children of the Jews, and it was, because those were the folks that came out of Abraham's Lord. But the blessing of Abraham gets extended to all of us here today through Jesus Christ. You might say, well, Pastor, how is that so? Turn with me to Galatians. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. And notice that Galatians chapter 3 and verse 6 starts out mentioning the same guy, Abraham. He says, consider Abraham in verse 6. He believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Understand then that those who believe are the children of Abraham. So if you and I believe in God and have faith in God, you and I are the sons of Abraham. Do you remember that old song we used to sing as children? Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham, and I know them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord right on and all that good stuff. We do, we do that song on vacation Bible fair. Well, you and I are sons, and by the way, when you see the word son in scripture, in many cases it's not gender specific. In other words, it means son and daughters. Women are included in that. So, he says, understand that you are sons, sons and daughters of Abraham. Verse 8, the scripture foresaw that God would justify Gentiles. Here it is, you and I are Gentiles. A Gentile is somebody else, than a Jew. Gentiles by faith and announced the gospel in advance to Abraham. Thank you, news. So the gospel was being announced. What is the gospel? The gospel is that Jesus Christ died on the cross and then he arose on the third day. The gospel is that God sent love in the form of a person, Jesus, and love came and lived among us. And love paid the price for your sin and mine. And love bridges the gap between earth and heaven. Isn't that good news? So when you and I say yes to Jesus, we are saying yes to him through faith and yes to what God originally set up with that covenant with Abraham. And I'll prove it to you even more. Keep reading. All nations will be blessed through you. That passage that I read to you in Genesis chapter 12 said all the nations of the earth are going to be blessed. And that blessing came through Jesus Christ. So once Jesus Christ came on the scene, the blessing of Abraham was now applied to the whole world. So God is not just desiring to bless the Jews, he's desiring to bless every, to bless every person on the planet. Verse 9. So those who have faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. As you continue reading that scripture all the way up to verse 14, it restates that point over and over again. So finish reading Galatians, and you'll see that you and I get in on the blessing of Abraham through Jesus Christ. If you continue reading that passage, you'll get that main thought right there. So, back to our main point, God established his covenant with Abraham, and then I said, God has made a covenant with his people. He's made an agreement with you and I. And what's that agreement? This is the good news. The agreement is that he loves you, he cares for you, he's going to protect you, and he's going to keep you in his arms of love and take you to be with him in heaven someday. Not only do you get to go to heaven, but on this planet Earth every day of your life, you have an answer to whatever problem faces you because you have Almighty God who's caring over you. Look at all the scriptures that talk about how God cares for you. The scripture is Psalm 91, but he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You know, I think Trish and I were driving just the other day and we saw this eagle just fly across our car, you know, up a few feet, and he was flying out. I said, boy, he's making it ready to swoop down on a mouse or something. And the wings of an eagle, they span, they're very long. Man, those wings are protected. And imagine how you being under the Almighty protection of God, that means that nothing, now listen here. Nothing happens to you or I unless it's with the permission of God. 
Nothing happens to you and I unless it's with the permission of the Almighty God. So when you got involved in an accident, when you got the diagnosis that you had cancer, I had that diagnosis. When you had the diagnosis that you had something else severe or tragic or a problem that happened or a relationship issue in your family, when somebody touched you in a way that they shouldn't have, God allowed it to happen. And know this, that God, through Jesus Christ, is the healing balm of Gilead. What is a bomb? It's an ointment. God wants to heal you of every, every problem that you ever had. God wants to take care of you over every trial that you have. God wants to take you under his wings of love because you are his covenant daughter. You are his covenant son that he has made an agreement with you. And he's promised, just like he promised to Abraham, I'll never leave you or forsake you, Abraham. I'm going to bless you. Look at all the blessings that God decided to give to Abraham. I just started writing down. And I, you know, you might, I'm going to read them real quick. But if you want, I'll give them to you again after the service. God said that he was going to increase Abraham's numbers. God said that he was going to make him the father of many nations, that kings would come from Abraham. God said that Abraham would be fruitful. That's a great promise. And remember, all the promises of Abraham come to you through Christ. God said that he would be fruitful. And in the agricultural, agricultural society that he was in, when you planted seed, you wanted it to grow. When you had animals, you wanted them to grow, not get sick and die. And God said Abraham would be fruitful. And by the time Abraham was moving from country to country, his numbers started to increase. Remember the story of Jacob, how he left the land because his brother was running after him. And Jacob's, uh, Jacob's herd, herd of sheep and his animals and everything that Jacob did just increased and flourished. You remember Joseph who came from the Abraham line. He was in Egypt and everything that Joseph did, it increased and it prospered. And you and I, when we are children, covenant sons and daughters, walking in faith, there's a condition, walking in faith, and obedience, whatever you and I put our hands to, it will prosper. Now this Abrahamic covenant was a conditional covenant. Very important to know that. Here's the condition. It was a pledge that God would be God over Abraham and his descendants. But there was something that the people of God had to do. They had to have total constant excuse me, total consecration to God, and it was symbolized by circumcision. 99 years old when he was circumcised. And not only was Abraham circumcised at 99, what does it say? Who else was circumcised? All the women. All the house, all the males, even all the slaves, everybody was circumcised at 99. And I'm going to deviate for a minute. Why circumcision? Because men, you know, that's painful. <laughs> Why circumcision? God wanted it to be a sign of their commitment to him. And God wanted in the most private area of a man's life his total surrender to God. That's what most theologians come up with, and I agree. In the most private area of a man's life, God is saying, I want total dependence and committal to God, even in that area of my life. So, Lord, I'm allowing you to be Lord over everything that I do. And so circumcision was a sign of the covenant. They had to obey God. They had to agree to follow his laws and his commands. And if they did, they would be blessed. And here's the blessing for you and I. As God's children are part of a new covenant, and now I'm speeding here by four weeks of preaching, but I will. If you and I will trust Jesus on a daily basis, if you and I will depend on God on a daily basis, if you and I will allow the power of the Holy Spirit to transform our lives on a moment-by-moment -moment basis by saying, yes, to the Lord, not to David, not to the flesh, my kids can say something to me and I want to just haul off and just slap. I can't, I can't give in to that. And you parents, and you children, you young people, when your parents say something to you, and you want to haul off and slap them, you can't do that. Because they're bigger than you, they might slap you back. No. <laughs> so we can easily give into the flesh family at any time. It's easy to give into the flesh. We were talking about that this morning in class. Or we can go there in a second. But well, if you and I will agree to 
to allow Jesus to be Lord of our lives. And here's the benefit. And this is the good news this morning. Whatever you put your hands to, you'll be blessed. Church, grab my hand. If I surrender my heart to God, God promised that he's going to bless my relationship with this woman called my wife. God has promised that we're going to have peace in the home. God has promised that we're not going to argue and get mad over this silly, silly little things. And I've already told the church about our moving episode like last Sunday you were here. <laughs> I told them about how, and, and Trisha allowed me to get personal, and how that when we moved last week, that every room in the house, you got to say where everything was placed. But in the one room where the TV was in my reclining chair, I wanted the chair in this one room, and Trisha initially said no. And so we got to a little argument about it. So I was telling the man that made his breakfast, I said, I just wanted the one room. And she told me no. And so we got to an argument, I wanted just the one chair in this room. And she goes, David, it doesn't pass the decor of the room. See, she used to be, and she used to work for a major hotel. And she was an interior decorator, basically. And she was over the purchase department. So she said it didn't fit. So, so I said to her, finally, after we had this impasse, I said, okay, honey, you win. Whatever you want to do is fine. I surrendered. I threw up the white flag. And then when I came back later on that day, lo and behold, she put the chair in the room that I wanted. Yes, that does. <laughs> but when we're willing to surrender, When we're willing to surrender the agenda to God, He blesses us. How many of you want blessed? Raise your hand. How many of you want everything that you be touched to be blessed? Raise your hand. And I don't know, I want us to be blessed in the field, blessed in the city, blessed in the going, and blessed in the coming. And some of you are short circuiting. You're cutting off your blessing because you're not being obedient. And this is this this covenant with Abraham was a conditional covenant. They had to obey God. Say to God, let's get in tune with what Jesus is doing and be blessed. And if you do, you're going to be walking on right street. Say amen. amen. Okay, point number two in the outline. God required Abraham to keep the terms of the covenant. Obedience and faith, right in the word covenant. God required Abraham to keep the terms of the covenant. That just fits in with what I was saying. That you've got to obey God. You've got to have faith. Those are two hallmarks of righteousness. This is a conditional covenant. How do you know it's a conditional covenant, Pastor? Where does it say that? Look at verse 4. Genesis chapter 17 and verse 4. As for me, this is my covenant with you. This is God speaking. As for me, this is my covenant. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abraham and ever Abraham. And then, notice that the people of God had their responsibility. God was going to do his part, and he wanted the people of God to do their part. Look at verse 9. And then God talks about the condition of the covenant. Then God said to Abraham, as for you. So God had his part to ask for me. And then the as for you is the part that Abraham had to keep. As for you, you must what? Keep my covenant. See, so God put a condition on it. You just can't give somebody everything that they want all the time and not know that there's going to be some requirement attached to it. And God is basically saying, if you want my blessing, you have to follow my covenant. Praise God. And then point number three, right in your notes. The covenant that God has made with his people is that, and then you write it in, everlasting covenant. Look at verse 13. Everlasting covenant. Where the born in your household are bought with your money, they must be circumcised. My covenant in your flesh is to be an everlasting covenant. That means it's what God said is not going to really come. Wait a minute, let me get this straight. Pastor, if I obey God, young people, if you obey your parents, young people, if you do the right thing, adults, if you treat your kids right, adults, if you cheat and have your relationships right with each other, God is saying he's going to bless you in every area of your life. Yes! The same blessing that he gave Abraham. I mean, you finish home with all the blessings. He all the blessings that came to Abraham. Let me go over them again. Increase Abraham's numbers, large families. Father of many nations, 
seeds, kings will come from Abraham. Abraham will be fruitful. This will be an everlasting covenant. God will be the God of Abraham and his descendants. And then Abraham in turn would walk before God and be blameless. That word blameless is used throughout this passage, and we're going to be talking about it. Blameless doesn't mean perfect, but blameless is used in Job, too. If you look at the book of Job, it says Job was blameless before God. Does that mean Job was perfect? No, Job said. The word blameless means God. When you are not blameless, that means we live holy and righteous lives. We live godly lives. So Abraham would walk before God and be blameless, and God would give Abraham the whole of Canaan. Oh my goodness. So God's going to give you land that sometimes you didn't even know was yours. God's going to bless you in real estate. God's going to bless you on your job. Man, these are some good promises. This is going to make this church prosper. This is going to make this church up to eradicate its mortgage, and we're going to be blessing churches around the planet. I just had another brother, Cheryl and I went off this week, and they wanted to use our building. God is going to be able to bless us someday that we're going to be saying, no problem, because we're going to have multiple rooms to rent out, multiple rooms so that we can bless people, because we are going to ourselves be blessed, and as we are blessed, we're going to bless the household of God. Now let me ask you a good conditional question. As the Lord blesses you and gives you further increase, because I've given you some good teaching this morning, the increase is coming your way. Blessing is coming your way. Let me ask you a conditional question, and you answer this in your heart before God. As God blesses you, will you bless his house? Amen? Now that's been my desire. I want to bless the house of God. As God blesses me, I give more. As God blesses me, I help the gospel to go further and the gospel to be penetrated into more places. This week, on Tuesday night, I'm close with this story. We had a brother named Tim, and his wife's name was Claudia. No, no, Marmarita. Thank you. And they are missionaries to where? At her way. And they shared from their hearts. And we got excited about the gospel, that we can be a blessing to this couple as they are taking the gospel to Paraguay. And they get ready to go back and enjoy that. So we are praying for them. And we already, as a church, already supporting several other ministries and missionaries around the world. Yeah, we are. But God is enlarging our tent so that we can be a blessing. And as we continue to bless others, God has promised that He's going to increase our poverty and He's going to bring good things our way. The illustration of a parent and a child, I'm quick with this. A, a parent that sees a child that's obedient and does a good thing, just like this beautiful little boy sitting on Cloudy is not a love. His name is David. Gabriel. Gabriel. Thank you, Gabriel. And when Gabriel makes good decisions and pleases mom and daddy, and Gabriel puts away his toys, and mom asks him to, mom and daddy are so delighted to see his obedient heart. But if Gabriel decides to do the contrary, I don't give him a negative thought, so I give him a big word. If Gabriel decides to do the contrary actions, mom and dad are not so prone as my scarecrow and give him those gifts that he wants on Christmas. By the way, while you're gone, I announce that you're giving out the tapes at the end of service. And they're not as they do it. And but you and I, same way, and I have the Father's heart and mind. As you come to the Heavenly Father, and everything that you say to the Father is not, Father, give me this. Father, heal me of this. Father, do this for me. But your heart is a heart of gratitude, and you're just loving on the Father. Then when you have a need, the Father just doesn't reach out and give you one thing. The Father opens up his wallet, and he gives you everything inside of it and empties it for you because he loves you so much. Amen? Amen. So God wants to bless you. God doesn't want to harm you. God wants to do good for you. God doesn't want to steal your joy. God wants to give you abundance. And this is the exciting news about the covenant. So the next three weeks, we're going to do it for three weeks. We're going to be talking about the different covenant arrangements, how it has an application to the life of the Christian. We're going to end up with the new covenant, which is going to lead us into our Easter sermons. And I want you to pack this place out in the soon weeks, because I want as many people to get in on this blessing as possible, because God is a God of blessing and abundance, and he is no respect of persons. That means he blesses people over there, and he blesses people over there. He cares about everybody. Shall we stand? As we're contemplating our day, as we're contemplating this message, God may be speaking to your hearts this morning. And it might be something that you might be saying, you know, Pastor David, I want to get in on being on this relationship with the Almighty God. And I need the Lord in my heart. 
And some of you this morning, even though you've been in church, and even though you've been in religious experiences and places, you've never said yes to the Lord. And you want to be blessed today. And you need Jesus as your Savior. The Bible does say that God loves the world so much that he sent his son. And God says that in Romans 10, that if you confess Jesus as your Savior, believe that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And so it's that every head is bowed, as we're in a very respectful moment now. You might be in a place where you're saying, Pastor David, I need I need salvation. I need a better way. I've been doing it my own way. And I am feeling. And I want to get in on some of those blessings that you've been talking about. Just raise your hand. I want to lead you in a prayer right there where you sit. Right? Yes, I see that name. Is there another? I want Jesus to come to my heart. Yes, I see that name. Any other hands? I want Jesus as my Savior. Just repeat this prayer after me. Just whisper this prayer to Jesus. When you leave today in the back, those of you that raised your hand, if you don't have a Bible, you need your own Bible. Uh, Brother Ben in the back, he'll give you a Bible. Just give him your name, and he'll give you a Bible so that you can start on your new walk of faith. But just repeat this prayer after me. Dear God, I realize that I don't need you, that I have sinned. And I ask you, Jesus, to forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart. Change me. I believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe that you arose on the third day for me. Now, Holy Spirit, come into my heart. Cleanse me. I turn away from all that's bad. In Jesus' name. And now, Father, we thank you for those that said yes to you this morning. It's so exciting when people are coming into the house of God and getting saved in my heart. Just say yes to what you're doing. And Father, I ask that you would bless the rest of the congregation this morning. The people that are here, that as the saints of God are walking in their destiny, walking in their faith, walking in their covenant relationship, that they're getting overcoming victories over the problems that the enemies are bringing their way. And that as they leave this place, they leave with the presence of the Lord, with the truth of God's word. They are victorious. They are sharing your love and peace with others. And we are changing our world for Jesus Christ. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.